Hey traders, Palmer from Bank to Trade. It is Sunday, February 26, 2022. What I want to do, I just want to talk a little bit about this uh, ENVX trade that I took uh, earlier in the uh, in the week. And some of you know me, some of you may not know me. I'm one of the moderators in Awesome Calls. And with, with AJ Trader 7, it's the place to be to learn trading the news, what moves the stocks and applying that move of the news to the stock and how to trade it. Options, swings, equity, it's all in here. Large caps, small caps, all account sizes. Some people, some traders don't even have accounts yet, but they're just in here to learn. And in particular, you know, this this ENVX trade you know, and, the, and Awesome Calls. Awesome Calls is just as much about the opportunity as it is about the education you get in the room. Because, you know, the opportunity, there are opportunities to trade all stocks all the time. Okay, but some of these trades like ENVX, you know, it's not AMD, it's not NVIDIA, it's not Tesla, it's not Apple. It's one of those obscure stocks that for some reason it's on AJ's list. Okay, and if it's something's on AJ's list, that's where we want to put our focus, especially early in the morning. The watch list, that's where we want to be. We can talk about tickers later in the day or later in the morning, but we're focused on these moves early. Okay, and I have my own site. I have some information. I've got a course. I've got some, you know, free information on here, uh, building a trading method, your day trading setup. There's no obligation here. You know, take a look, take a listen. I focus a lot on volume and volume patterns and looking for entries within the trend. That's what this course is about. It's trading the trend, looking for entries to get in on stock. Okay, but speaking of ENVX, again, this is about opportunity. Okay, one of those tickers that's on very few people's watch lists. It's a move like this. AJ likes to trade these moves, but you know, a little bit about why if we look back and we see this move it's up almost 20 percent it's up over 20 percent okay but but why it's up on earnings okay they missed on earnings they lost 19 cents they were only supposed to lose 16 cents and they barely beat on revenues okay and you're up over 20 percent on this news okay if if apple had mixed earnings or if nvidia had mixed earnings. Tesla is its own beast. Beef. Beast. Okay, but if, if Apple was up on a earnings miss, or Apple had an earnings miss, barely beat on revenue, do you think they'd be up over 20%? Okay, now you can't compare ENVX to Apple, but a move like that, we can still trade that stock. It's not a headline stock. Enovix Corp. I don't even know what they do. I didn't even look at what they did when I took this trade. I was looking at the move, and a lot of this is about awesome calls. Now, I don't have any indicators on here, okay? People know how I trade. If you want to see how I trade, it's all on the website and the course material. But this is, you know, this is more or less about opportunity for this trade in this video because it doesn't have to be a headline ticker that's only CNBC is talking about. Okay, we do follow those. We do want to follow those. We want to focus on those because the more volume you have in a stock, the more eyes on it, the better that trend can be. Okay, if you have volume flow coming in and coming out, it's being talked about, the better chance you're going to have a nicer, cleaner trend to trade. Okay, but ENVX was up over 20% on those numbers. All right, and looking at AJ's notes, he's having... Uh, Pop to 10, look for a 75 cent to buck 25 push. Uh, break on 9.35 on the open, look for 8.50 and under and be done with it. Okay. Before we get to that, okay, what I do early in the morning when I'm looking for those, because I, you know, this stock, I'm up three hours before the open. I'm looking at news right at about 5.30 and I start looking at the whys. Okay. And just going back to its simplest form, going back to the yearly chart, you know, what do we see? Okay, we see that the stock has been in a downtrend right in this area. Try that again, you know, something like that. I'm, I'm just doing this real fast, okay? You got it. If you want to be perfect, we can be perfect. But 
what I'm looking back here also, you know, at this point in time, that's our price point we're looking at right here on this gap up. What do we see? All right, these are AJ's levels, okay? I automatically notice this, you know, this 10 area, right at about $10 right there, okay? Big barrier to get through. Now, we're playing the open, it's gapping up, so what are, you know, targets to the upside? Okay, looking right here, this is where it got. Previously, it bounced up from. Looking at this right here, because if we get a pop, we could fill this gap. All right, gap it up on the way up. Also, you know, nice round number, 1150. Looks like it danced there a few times. Okay, this area could come into play also. Okay, this 950. Now we go back to our day of that trade. Okay, AJ's numbers here, and these are the previous price areas that showed up on the daily chart way back there. All right. Coming into this open, all right, I'm watching. I've got this on watch right at about here when I found it. It's up over 20% here, okay? I get up early. I start looking at tickers early because I've got about until 9.30. This is my day. i got to go to the office. I work full-time. Another great thing about Awesome Calls is if you work full-time, you have some money. You have some, excuse me. You have some time before the open. You have time after the bell or coming into the close. AJ talks about swings. You don't have to be in front of the chart all day. If you can't be in front of the chart all day, you still have opportunities to trade with this room. Okay, it's up to you to manage your time, how much time you can trade. You have to devote a lot of time to trading and learning. That's a must, okay? And then there's chart time. Okay, I had an email about earlier about, you know, what's my trade duration? How long can I be in a trade? You know, how much do I like to make per trade? And that sort of thing. All right, I focus on momentum and momentum setups. Okay, in my course, I talk about trading uptrends and downtrends. Looking at ENVX coming into the open, this is what? This is nothing but an uptrend. Okay. Mainly, we're looking for these dips to take something back long again, okay? But this is where you have to put the news with the move of the stock, all right? And, and Darkside said it really well. We trade AJ's notes at the open, trade that move, and then later in the day, we can apply our technicals. If, you know, if we have Fibonacci, if we have pivots, if, where's our VWAP? What's our method? What are our rules of trading, okay? Me, I like to have a trend to find on the way down, and then look for entries to get back in. Short cover rallies get in, short cover rally get in, short cover rally get in, take some. Okay, that's what my rules are based on. But when we have a news event where a stock is gapping up, in this case over 20% on so-so earnings, in the back of my head is that's up too much on this move. Okay, what's AJ going to say in the stock? How does he want to play it? I took some short up here when we started hitting this previous area, and then we had what? I am big on volume and volume patterns, okay? Pre-market is its own beast. You can only use limit orders. The volume patterns are not going to be the greatest, especially on an obscure stock that doesn't have a whole lot of volume on a daily average to begin with. I think this had, let's take a look. Okay, good volume on a daily basis, about two or three million, but in pre-markets, it had some juice going after market into the close. On the open, eh, it was kind of thin. We, you know, if you're trading stocks pre-market, you want to have several hundred thousand, a million. What's the news? What's the ticker? This was kind of like, eh, let's see how this is going to go. There's not much there, all right? But I'm taking into account the news event that's pushing this up, all right? So when I see a resistance area, why didn't I take it here? Still giving it some time, letting this clean up. We get another move up, okay, cycle high area. I go over that in my course material. Add a resistance area, volume coming in on the sell side. I short 500, take it down from like 1020 to this 980 area, getting this bounce up above here. Why did I take some off there? Let's try to highlight this in blue. 
because we have this action going on here, 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 and here. Took a chunk out of there, made about 300. We bounce back up to 10 again. Okay. I leave it alone. We get this nice pull. That would have been beautiful. Trading pre-market is, is, its, is its own beast. Okay. Only can use limit orders. Thin price action. Wild swings. Okay. You got to be on it. Now, on the open... Okay, when we pulled down here, I thought it was over. I thought the stock was done. AJ put it back on his list more than likely because it came up almost another point before the open. All right, so we have a chance to break this up to the upside, then take it down, or it's just going to flush. All right, on the open, tried to do 10, came right back down. It's holding, didn't make it. Okay, this is not good price action. It's, you know, 30, 40 cents on a $10 stock. That's nuts. All right, big moves there percentage-wise. So I let this one go, all right? Made its way back up. This is where I start watching it again. All right, we had selling here. This was a trade to short. You have 50 cents or so. Now 10, if you're one, I'm not, you know, I'm not exact. 1014 to 940, call it 60, 70 cents. Honestly, realistically, you'll get about 30 or 40 cents of that move, okay? Again, how do you trade? That was one of the questions I got. If I'm short a thousand bucks or a thousand shares or whatever, and I get 30 or 40 cent quick, and AJ says it's going to break 935, it doesn't, bounces back up, comes back up against me, people are getting nervous, I'm paying myself even on a move down here. Okay, on the move back up, we get what? We're coming back up into the resistance area. We're at this 10 area, we break through it, all right? This is a trade right here. This is AJ trading. If he wants to go long a stock, he's looking for a momentum push like this. Get above it, take some, get in, get out. All right. He's not necessarily going to trade the stocks because there's a lot of other things in play that probably have more range. However, the pattern is the same. Get in on momentum, get out. He's done. This is his trade right here. We have our method of trading. We like to look for things that we'd like to look for in setups. All right. We're double topping up here at an area that's had trouble getting through and holding a move. Selling comes in, and if we notice how these bars are contracted just a little bit, we went from about a 20 or 30 cent move to about a 5 or 10 cent move on these bars. Okay, I sell a thousand right here. The short should be right here. On a market order, we get a little pop. Okay, want to get in because this is, again, you're up over 20 percent here. We get this nice quick move down. Again, that, that email was, how long am I in a trade for? I need to be done right about here. I get another 50 cents on this move from like 10, 10, 10 down to 940. I get fall, 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 I'm out. All right, why did I get out right there? Again, I gotta be done. And if we look back, what do we have here? Okay, I'm selling at support. I'm selling at support. I know AJ says if 935 is broken, but I just got 500 bucks right there. All right. A lot of the way I like to trade is I like to scale out. Now, remember, I made about three bills right here. I made a quick 500 here. I could have taken the way I usually trade. If this is like my first trade of the day or so, I'll take off 800 or so or 750. I like to take off like 70 or 80 percent of the move. Get paid on that quick. In this case, this was maybe five minutes. All right. Let the less let the remaining work. Put a trailing stop in. Okay. Sometimes I got to put a hard stop in. I work full time. I can't be in front of my platform. I got to adjust the stop from my phone. Fine. I do what I can. A lot of us do what we can. All right. AJ is looking for a 9:35 break. Okay. That's down here. Now let's say we broke that on the open. All right, or we're breaking it right here, and he's saying, look, he's saying uh, 850 or better. Gap fill back to 850. All right, regardless, let's say we took the trade here on this support break, 927. Fantastic, move down. All right, you got 50 cents there. AJ saying 850. Are you holding until 850? You got 50 or 60 cents in on this move, and you're telling yourself, no, AJ said 850, so I'm not going to get out until 850. You're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. A little short cover rally. We're having a what now? What's going on here? We have a double bottom trying to form. Where were we before that? Eh, not much there. 
to hold that. Another rally, and we get what? Mm, little buying block there. I'd be getting nervous if I was trying to short this and hold it, and AJ said 850, 850, 850. You had 50 or 60 cents. It goes against you. You get out with a loss, or you could have had money you didn't take it. Back to that question that I got, when, how long am I in a trade for? I'm in a trade long enough where I can make money. Okay, if there's a target or a support area, a FIB, a pivot number, that's down here at 840, and we're dancing around here, I'm waiting till it breaks to get down here, then I'll take the trade off. No. All right, you got in up here, you got here short, you got 50, 60, 70 cents, you're paying yourself on this move. Okay, so how long are you in a trade for? It can be a very difficult question to answer because if you have money on the table, if I've got money on the table, I got to be gone right here to go to the office. I'm going to get paid on this move. All right, I'm going to get take off the majority. If it starts moving against me and I'm holding maybe two or three hundred with maybe a 20 or 30 cent gain on that and I get stopped out, I don't care. I've made the bulk of the move down on the bulk of my shares. I am out. All right. So regardless of where you have a pivot or a support area or somebody's notes, if you have 50, 60, 70 cents on your table and you haven't paid yourself on that, you know, if it's Tesla or NVIDIA and you got 50 or 60 cents, that move is more than likely probably still going. If you're on a $10 stock, and you have 30, 40, 50, 60 cents on that move, you got to pay yourself something. Okay. What, regardless of whatever is, you know, there's a tar target down here, you got to pay yourself on this move coming down. All right. So how much time do you have? How much time do you want to be watching the ticker? Is something else moving that you want to pay attention to? Get paid on that. Leave a stop in, a hard stop if you can't watch it, and then go to that other ticker. Okay, you can't be stubborn saying, I want 850, I want 850, I want 850. Especially if you got in a dollar or more, or even 50 cents before that. 30 or 40 cents on a $10 ticker is incredibly good. Okay, AJ's looking for a complete gap fill to this area. If we're up here, that's fantastic. If we're starting to short it down here, we want this to break. Okay, we got, we, you know, you don't know it's going to double bottom until it starts doing that. Because if this is all we're looking at for the time so far, we don't know it's coming back down here. It could have just zoomed up from there. Okay, it started to make its way down, but then it held, went back up. So you got to pay yourself something. But again, these obscure tickers, ENVX, it's on nobody's watch list except awesome calls. All right, so... It's opportunity. What do you want to trade? What news do you like to trade? You got to put the time into the chart and the news and apply that move with the news to the stock. Then you got to have your method and your rules about how you're going to trade that stock. I have money on the table. I take it. I can be in trades for a very short amount of time. All right. A lot of times my pre-market trades are longer in duration because they can take a little bit longer to work. However, if the move comes quick, 10-4, this is almost a point in five minutes or so, I'm taking some of that. You would be, I hate to say it, a fool not to take some of that off. You would be a fool not to take some of this off on this move down. Okay, you're waiting for 850. Hey, you're going to let a green trade potentially turn into a red trade when you have a nice gain right there. If you're under, you only have two more trades left for the week, you're under 25 grand. You don't want to waste it. You're going to try to milk this and then it starts going against you. Ooh, that's terrible. That is a gut punch. Okay. Build that account slowly. Take profits along the way. Get yourself paid. Now, per the course material, the way I trade, we have a nice downtrend here. Starting to get established. Selling the rallies, getting in short. Selling the rallies, getting in short. Selling the rallies, getting in short. Not a lot of range on the stock, 10, 15 cents or so on these moves. Again, it's a $10 stock. But the same pattern applies to getting in, where the rallies, where the sells, you know, continue on the rallies to the downside. Not the greatest volume on this to read that, all right? Pulls with volume, 
pulls with volume. This is where we want to be. Looking to get short, looking to get short, looking to get short, looking to get short, looking like we might be changing with the volume patterns back to the upside at a double bottom. All right, pay yourself something. Look for opportunities in other stocks because they're going to present themselves. This is what Awesome Calls is about. That's all I got on ENVX. Trade smart. You got money on the table. Take it. Get paid. See you guys tomorrow.